Hey there, folks. So today I've got something pretty interesting. Uh, I got a uh, goodie, pa goodie bag from Funny Playing a little while back full of a whole bunch of mods they wanted me to check out. Uh, and in there were something that I thought um, looks quite familiar. Flip them over, notice it has some someone else's name on there now, uh, but I actually got cloned. Look at that, they took my name off and put something else on there. And you can tell it was me who got cloned, they're my mod, because why else would they include these stupid little useless pads once they've added the um, castellations there? But look at that, same freaking thing. But they cloned me. Anyway. Uh, so I have already installed this in uh, Game Boy Advance a while back, um, but one of the things I did not do was I never actually finished the mod. Uh, I installed it in this Game Boy, I've done quite a few videos, and I have done a short video since. Uh, let me get... totally forgot my test room here. Um, boot that up, but I've got the button tester in there. You can see the D-pad is working pretty nicely. Uh, if there were problems where we were hitting multiple buttons at the same time, and you see I really had to press down with two hands to get that, you'd see it, it triggers a little warning there. Oh, let's kill that light so you can see a little bit better. Not exactly the brightest screen. But people still stand by their AGS 101 mods. Anyway, you can see up, down, left, right, everything's working pretty nicely. A, B, feels good. Uh, start and select are stock, so are L and R, but this doesn't test L and R. Um, I don't know. It worked out pretty nicely. The problem is, I think in my case, I published a mod that wasn't specifically mine to begin with, and then I never finished it. I just never got around to it. Uh, and then someone else comes along and goes, wow, that looks really neat. And by the time I did finish it, they came along and then had these custom membranes made. Uh, so the mod does come with membranes and you need to use the membranes it comes with because these are not stock membranes, these are modified. Um, so they're a little bit more like an SP membrane on the bottom, except that these are for a Game Boy Advance and not Game Boy Advance SP. Uh, so the problem I had was I never actually made the membrane part um, I figured we were going to have custom buttons made, uh, and I was going to work with Retro CNC on that, but I just never really got around to it, and then I got cloned so many times I kind of stopped caring, but there are 3D printable files up on my repository now if you want to use my mod. Um, you need to either have your friend or figure out for yourself how to print them in TPU. I don't know that they'll feel very good with, um... A harder material like uh, PLA or PETG but in TPU they actually do feel genuinely really good and I don't know if you can hear that too well but I don't know I like it but anyway this isn't about me this is about my mod um, <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and get that installed into this thing I'm gonna use this thing as a donor because um, I don't know it's been sitting here for I don't know, ever since these shells came out, and for those not in the know, this is a BoxyPixel Game Boy Advance housing. Uh, I was an early adopter, and I kind of regret it. Um, I learned some hard lessons, and... Well, I say I learned hard lessons, but realistically, they didn't set in until uh, way later. Uh, but I bought this housing... I'm not happy with it. I can't even get the freaking thing to read games most of the time, uh, but that's not, that's that's neither here nor there. Um, anyway, as you can see, my down button doesn't work as well as the rest. Uh, as I'm rotating through the test here, you can see down has significantly fewer presses than the rest, and uh, all I'm doing is I'm pressing up, left, down, right, up, left, down, right, you see I'm at 39, 37, and 38 on up, left, and right, but 27 on down. It just doesn't work too well. A is fine, but you have to hit it a little harder than I'd like. 
Um, same thing with B, but to slightly more extreme. Start and select, mostly fine. Same thing, gotta hit them a little bit harder than I'd like, but they do work. Um, but the most egregious problem is the L button, just straight gets stuck down. And I wasn't willing to criticize at first because I thought that was just a me problem. And then I tried OEM buttons and the problem didn't go away because originally I was using aftermarket buttons. Um, with, with all the buttons, I, I was having difficulty even after switching to OEM. So I just threw this thing in a drawer and forgot about it. So let's, let's reshell it so that I don't hate it. And let's fix that. And... Obviously, I'm not I'm I'm not unbiased here, but I just think the fit and finish on this is not great at all. Especially with this button getting stuck. I don't know. If you don't see any problems, then I guess this shells for you, but I personally really don't like it. Not to mention the horrifying battery mod that I had to do for this thing. But that's neither here nor there. Luckily I used a battery connector so I could unplug it. Uh, but the backlight kit in this Game Boy, it's it's an older mod. Um, for those who haven't been exactly in the scene for as long as I have... Oh, wow, there's some corrosion on that. That's probably why it's not reading games. Um, for those who haven't been in the scene as long as I have, and it's understandable, you know, maybe you got into it the last few years, and that's fine. Welcome. Congratulations. Um... At the time, the only backlight mods for the Game Boy Advance were using an AGS-101 screen, the screen out of the backlit Game Boy Advance SP console, and using an adapter ribbon. Um, that's exactly what this mod is, except a little bit more advanced because we're using a uh, custom converter to handle the backlight dimming. And let's pull that out of there. Uh, so the actual like display data is all just like one-to-one -one translated um, But then there's this uh, microcontroller here that is handling the uh, button inputs and the uh, backlight controller um, In this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and swap these wires while I'm in here because They just straight have it wired up backwards, but before I get into that Got some weird markings on the motherboard um, from the metal shell. I think it was. Man, I remember seeing them when I was in here. Oh well, never mind. Disregard. Crazy old man rambling. Um, the membranes, however, are quite a bit squished. You can see that they're really being clamped by the housing. You see the markings in there from the machining. Looks to be mostly just the A and B. Oh, and there's straight metal slivers in there. That's that's fine. Pull that LCD out of there. All right. And last thing I want to talk about before moving on with this shell forever uh, is this lens. Now, I have a plastic lens in here because the glass lenses at the time did not fit. Uh, this lens cutout shape is very complicated, all right? And this is not a boxy pixel problem. I'm not blaming him for this, 
but there was a better solution than what he chose to do, uh, which was just give it a big old gap on the sides. Now, this is an older shell, and like I said, it's not it's not the same cutout as the current ones, but it's still not great, and the fact that I couldn't even fit my glass lens in there just totally, totally soured me from using this thing. Uh, and so I would like to make it official and continue not using it. All right, so let us, let's go ahead and carry on with the actual mod that I'm sure you guys came here to see. That booted up. Get this battery mod out of here. I highly, highly do not recommend these battery mods, by the way. Um, this is a really bad solution to a problem that we have much better solutions to these days. Um, of course, I didn't know any better at the time, but I do now, and I'm warning you now. Come on. There we go. Got that detached. I will set it aside, pack it up with the shell, do something with that. I don't know. That's good. That cleaned up too. Attach that wire there. And then let's come in here with the mod. Uh, thankfully, some of the changes that they did make, um, aside from literally just taking my name off, uh, they added these two little um, sticky outy bits with uh, castellated vias on the edge there so that you don't have to connect up those two bodge wires. That's the only purpose of those. Uh, let's see how it works out. I'm going to try and get this lined up with the solder pads. And let's try it out. Put that tape in the stupid spot, didn't I? Clear. I'm removing that wire because I'm, I'm rewiring this thing while I'm in here. No, it's not incompatible. I just want to multitask, I guess. Two, three. What am I missing? One, two, three, four. Oh, missing that.
come in here with this wire. Just slip that underneath. You want that to connect over here. For what it's worth, I do not recommend any products from Eng Labs or whatever they're going by these days. Eng Lab, this this company here, um, I don't think they make a single original product. Everything's clones, except for possibly this thing. I'm not sure. I haven't seen anyone else selling anything like this. Uh, granted, the community has mostly moved on to better, cheaper mods, but at the time it was what we had. And of course that's too short too. I think there's an easy way to do this, and that is pin tin both of these first. Got those, and then we got to solder to this fiduciary mark. Kind of wish I never did that, but oh well. There we go. There are better places to get a ground, though that's probably one of the more convenient ones for a mod like this. Just got to get that last wire soldered up, and I think we're good to go. Again, these extra wires that I'm soldering up, these are for the backlight mod that I have that I'm fixing while I'm in here. These are totally irrelevant to the tactile mod. Oh, and we kind of need battery terminals while we're here. Okay. I had these set aside because I figure most people aren't doing this. Probably don't need to figure out how to remove them. Uh, I need.
one and the second one should be quite a bit easier to get in or not Get this thing cleaned up and reassembled. I've already got a shell picked out for it. But I want to get all the nasty flux out of here first. Hopefully this thing doesn't need a power switch cleaned. I didn't even think to check that. I'm using a slightly clear shell, so I just want to get it cleaned up. Beforehand. Hopefully everything fits. I didn't even do a test fit. Alright. The shell I'm using today is going to be one of the newer Cloud Game Store shells. Um, I really wanted to rebuild this original Game Boy, but I'm going to settle for just building another one that is similarly specced. Throwing stuff everywhere. Specifically, I needed this, but I think I've got a light pipe right here anyway. I'm just going to reuse the original start select for now. I'll get this thing swapped out eventually. Just doing a test fit to make sure I'm not pinching any wires uh, because that one right there I can see is going to be pinched. And same thing with this wire that I just ran up here. But there's an easy fix for both. bit of plastic. And then 
just like that. It just works. And the buttons feel nice and clicky. Everything feels right, I guess. Uh, let me go ahead and finish with this install and try it out for real. So this screen probably doesn't fit without modification. No, of course not. Spacing at least right. Yeah, looks close enough. All right, so I'm gonna go cut this out now. I will be right back. I just need to make it so that this shell fits. I'm gonna cut it on uh, my rotary tool here. I have a. Um, it's not. It's not a Dremel, but it is a rotary tool. It's Craftsman brand. Might as well be a Dremel. It's probably Dremel OEM. Um, but I have it in a uh, like drill press stand, and I like to use that for prepping shells. But I am just going to mark off the areas that don't need to be cut, and then just cut everything else. So we need to cut these walls down. And that should be good. So I will be right back. All right, so I think we're good to continue with this here. Go ahead and get this lens stuck down first. Now I am using a lens from Cloud Game Store and I'm using a housing from Cloud Game Store. Oh, I should have masked that off first. Hang on one sec. Never mind, apparently I still don't have a paint pen, so get this stuck down there. But again, Cloud Game Store shell, Cloud Game Store lens should be a nice fit, because uh, like I was complaining about earlier, the Game Boy Advance lens cutout is very complicated, and everyone seems to have their own slightly different version of it. Uh, so mix and match shells for the best experience, I guess. Or don't mix and match, rather. The screen in there. And for anyone sitting at home watching why I'm messing with such an old mod, no, I don't think these mods are better. No, I don't recommend them. I just have one already because I've had one for years. But that'll sit in there. There's no bracket or anything that holds it in. It just kind of wiggles around. Uh, we can come back and, and tape it down or something like that. Uh, but I'm going to make sure the alignment is good first before I do that. Um, not to mention the amount of room on the inside of a console with one of these mods is not exactly um, generous so might need that room that would be otherwise taken up by tape so yeah and start and slide This routed a little bit better. Alright. Whoops.
Well, everything seems seated right. Shockingly. Bag in a bag in a bag in a bag. does come with three screws for the motherboard. Oh, I forgot a step. Forgot two, actually. I want to go in there and clean that up, but also I need to install the shielding. Shielding is not an optional part of the housing. Because otherwise you're going to be sliding your carts over these components. They'll get caught, they'll break, they'll scratch, etc. against when you slide it in. Anyway, let's get that cleaned up and then let's move on. And just clean up all the flux from earlier. Again, not really necessary for the mod that I'm going to title this video based off of, but... Uh, and I can tell I have been in here to clean the power switch before, so hopefully it's still fine. I can't imagine that it's been used. Uh, oh, wow. Totally forgot these.
Apparently BoxyPixel shells needed insulation for cart pins. That's just kind of silly. But it is what it is. We certainly don't need it anymore. Seems like everything fits. Where's my other driver? I don't understand. I haven't gone anywhere. Oh, I put it away. There's supposed to be one more screw, a short one for here, but I don't have it for some reason. Is that short? Yeah. It's not the right color, but whatever. Sure. fitting together right there. I don't know if it's because it's hitting the screen or what, but the uh, power switch is wobbling around and there's something fierce. Uh, so let's get... Oh, that's unfortunate. Let's get batteries in here and try it out, huh? So yeah, I can tell it's hitting the screen based off those pressure marks, so I'm going to have to pull the back off and shave down the battery compartment because that's just how it works with these mods. They're kind of a pain in the butt, but I'll do that after the video. You guys have suffered through enough. Let's do... Oh. Okay. I guess it does need power switch too. <laughs> So, problem the first. Let's try... Oh yeah, this thing had corrosion on the cart slot, that's right. Alright, so A works, B works. Start select, both work. Ah! There's a problem though. Notice I can hit all four D-pad buttons, whereas with my version of the mod, I don't think we do.
but you'll never be able to tell because I can't boot the freaking thing up. reason is because I put a little spacer on mine and I just didn't use that spacer here um, but that's an easy enough fix all we're gonna do I'm gonna pull it apart I'm gonna do this off camera because we've been here long enough uh, and there's a few other things I need to take care of anyway like fixing the fitment um, but all I did just a little bit of tape underneath the ball to uh, space it out Something like this, just cut a little bit off this, stick it down, Bob Jonti. Uh, all we need to do really is just remove the hole in the middle of the pad because uh, I didn't, this was a uh, prototype really, um, proof of concept, make sure it works. And then the new version I made, we got rid of the hole in the center, but they, they cloned the old version anyway. so. All you need to do is just take a little bit of uh, tape, stick it down in the center to physically lift the D-pad up, and that's pretty much it. Otherwise, it does feel pretty good. Um, it's clickier than mine, if nothing else. Louder. Um, the actual feel is pretty similar. Uh, it feels like there's a little bit more travel on the clone version, uh, which I think with the style of D-pad button works out a little bit better because otherwise this thing kind of rattles around in here. Uh, whereas on this mod, it seems to... The membrane seems to hold it in place somewhat nicely. Uh, so I'd say that's... That's an improvement, I guess. And look at that, my backlight controller still works. And now, it's the right way around. Funny how that works. Ooh, I can see I also pinched that wire though. I gotta go fix that. All right. Um, yeah, I it, it's decent. Um, I don't really have any problems with it. I've got to go pull this thing apart and do some finishing touches on this build so that it's usable. Um, but otherwise, I'm I'm pretty pleased with the uh, tactile mod. Uh, so yeah, it is a clone of mine, and I am kind of butthurt that they deleted my name from it. But realistically, it was open source. I mean, that's kind of what happens. Uh, whenever you open source something and it's not like it had a restrictive license on it So it's not like I can say hey You took my software and did something I licensed you to do with it. So It is what it is, you know if I wanted to sell it I never should have open sourced it and quite frankly. I don't want to sell it. So I'm just glad someone picked it up and is mostly doing it right um, My understanding is funny playing is making the membranes whereas this other company is making the actual PCBs themselves and distributing it. I believe Funny Playing will also pick up distribution since they're making the membranes for it. But I don't know. It's pretty neat. Um, I'll, I'll hint that maybe they should add Start and Select to the uh, to the mod as well because I mean if they're making custom membranes like that was the only reason Start and Select never got buttons either was because I didn't want to have to deal with making custom buttons for that. But I don't know. It's pretty good. I'm digging it. Um, so I'll link this stuff down in the description. Um, I don't have a video on this backlight mod. Uh, this backlight mod actually predates my YouTube channel. Um, but I suppose I can link to the Reddit thread I made on it. It's, it's pretty old. Uh, it's not very um, power efficient. You might notice it is significantly brighter than the other AGS-101 mod that I have here uh, that is not without consequence to battery life, but I mean, it does work. Um, but anyway, yeah, I'll link to I'll link to some stuff down in the description. Make sure you check out the description. Um, otherwise, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, and uh, keep on being awesome. Until next time.